Hi everyone and welcome to yet another tutorial bucket tutorial. This time what we're looking at is one of the most requested topics for glamour retouching and that is breast enhancement or Photoshop cosmetic surgery. This particular process that I'm going to go through is one of many different techniques but I think it works well so give it a spin and see what you think. There may be some future tutorials where we look at other methods as well. Now what I need to do is first show you where we're going to. This is a perfectly acceptable image with a perfectly acceptable pair of breasts, but we want to enlarge them by a couple of cup sizes. So here is what we're going to. It's quite a significant change, but not ridiculous either. And for me, that's important. You try to keep it within the realms of the believable. OK, I'll just turn those on and off one more time and we will now go and get ourselves ready now before I begin this uh, tutorial I've gone to my channels palette and I've already loaded up a special channel which I'm using as a selection mask called breasts and bra this I'm going to use to select the area from the image that we're going to work on and I'm going to isolate it on its own layer as I say this is one particular way of doing it so I'm using a PC and I will control click on those breasts in my breast and bra channel palette and if you're using a map Mac you're using command click so I'm gonna go back to my layers palette go to my background layer and I'm now going to take a copy of this selection area and float it up onto its own layer on the PC that is control J on the Mac that is command J OK, I've got my new layer. I'll just rename that layer. Well, that's not what I wanted. Just try that again. There we go. Bra and breast. And we're ready to begin. Now the tool I'm going to use for this in this first iteration is the liquify filter. So I'm going to go over to my filter menu and choose liquify. Now in the liquify dialog box that appears there's a lot of different options if you've done some of my other tutorials you might know a little bit about liquify but I will try and explain things as I go as gently as possible. Now the main tools that we need to use for this particular job are the forward warp tool the reconstruct tool if we make a mistake think of this as an undo brush you can just paint back what you've done wrong and the bloat tool. Now the bloat tool is used as the name suggests to expand or puff up any particular object that it's worked on. So I'll take my zoom tool and I'll zoom in on the area that we're working on. Get in nice and close. And there's a couple of options in this liquify palette that we need to have a look at. And one of these is show backdrop. Now if I turn on and off show backdrop you get an idea of what's happening here. If I don't show backdrop I only get to see the isolated areas that I've floated up onto their own layer. But I do want to see the backdrop so I can get some context for what I'm doing. Now the other options in this are the use all layers and the mode. Now I've set this to behind because I do want to see what's happening behind this new floated layer. You can fiddle around with the opacity selection if you don't want to see it all quite so much and it will cut down the opacity but I'm just happy to keep this at 100% myself. Alright, now brush size. I'll start off by selecting the bloat tool. The brush size is too small. You need to keep the size in sympathy with the area that you're working on. So I'll need to increase my brush size and you can do it through the brush size selection box up here just by dragging it up or if you know your keyboard shortcuts you can increase it very quickly just using your keyboard shortcuts. So I'll just pump this up a little bit and I'll say yeah that's about right for this particular job. And I'll just start by a single click. Now with a single click you can see how that went voomp, that expanded very quickly. Now that was a bit too quickly so I'll just take the reconstruct brush and I'll just brush that back and hey, it shrinks it all back down. So you can use these two in combination to fine tune what you're doing. So I'll take my bloat tool one more time and I'm going to zoom in even closer. Never hurts to get in too close. And I'll just very carefully single gentle click them again take your time don't rush just increase the size gently I'm going around those edges there you can see where I'm placing my 
cursor, I'm trying to keep this in sympathy with the existing shapes. Don't worry about anything weird that happens along the edges of this just yet because we can fix that up later on. Okay, I might turn off show backdrop for a second. And I might shift the opacity to blend in the mode. I'll just turn that down so I can now see the change between the two. So it's been a substantial increase already. Hmm, yep, that's not too bad. And I'll go work on the other one now. I'm just using my hand tool here, which is the spacebar on both the Mac and PC. And again, gently start increasing the sizes. I'll just turn off the show backdrop for a second. Just gently increasing. I'm mainly turning off the backdrop at the moment so I can save a little bit of horsepower on the PC because this is a very, very demanding uh, filter. It uses up an awful lot of power and gets very slow. I don't want to sitting here forever watching this. Okay, backdrop back on. Set it back to behind. And I can now see the effect a little bit better. You'll find using behind works quite well on your own machine if you've got enough horsepower. Okay. Might just turn the opacity down just a little bit so I can see there's before and there's after. That's really quite a significant change, isn't it? That's really changed quite a lot. Okay, we'll accept that change. Returns the liquefier result into the main Photoshop interface and I can now judge my results. There's my bra and breast layer. So there's the after result and it's really quite good. Now there's a couple of little fine tuning things that you might want to check on. In particular you need to get in really close with your zoom tool. You need to check the edges. Any edges where there are strange artifacts that might appear around the edges of the image that look fake or don't quite look natural. And really that's not too horrible. I might make one little change here and I'm just going to drop in a layer mask on my bra and breast layer and I'll take from my palette a normal brush I'll just knock the size down just a little bit fill it with black and I'm just going to paint out just a little bit of that blue bra edge just get back some of the detail that I think fits in just a little bit better in the context of the image and I think that looks all right. I'll just keep on just working my way around here, just checking for any strange or odd looking objects. And how does that one look? Yeah, I might just knock that out just a little bit. There we go. Yep, I can live with that. That looks all right. Ooh, that doesn't look very good. So we'll just knock that one out too. So it's just little minor cleanups you have to worry about here, and I've gone a touch too far there. I'll just swap colours, so I can now use my layer mask to just fill that back in. I do love layer masks so very much, they do save a lot of stress. And how do the edges look there? I think this looks not too shocking actually, it's not too bad. Now if you really want to go the whole hog on this, you can work on the edges of the bra to bring back even more detail in the lace, but we're in a hurry here today just to show you the effect that you get from working with these tools. I'll just zoom out. And let's have a look. That's before and that's after. So it's not a bad result. Now there is a little fine tuning thing you can do if you want to go that little mile extra. Now this technique involves selecting the layer that you're working on and then using a free transform. You can get free transform from the edit menu, free transform, or you can use the keyboard shortcut of Control T on the PC or Command T on the Mac. Now when you do a normal transform, you use the edges to either scale or twist around. I'll just Control Z, and if you use Control on the PC and Command on the Mac, you can distort things. But I'll just control Z and undo. There is another way you can use this tool which is really cool and that is right up here. When you're in free transform mode you can switch between free transform and warp. When you click on warp you get a mesh grid. 
Now the mesh grid allows you to pull out these handles and you can start to twist. It's sort of like a liquify type of function but it's a little bit more flexible so you can do quite a bit with this and this is one of the methods that's used for also altering eye shapes and nose shapes so this is a perfectly legitimate method but uh, be careful be gentle with this don't go too far it's it's good for doing final touch-ups and for making minor enhancements okay say so enter and there is my finished result so let's have a look before and after. Oh, now when you do this with the uh, transform tool, look what's happened up here. Yes, nasty little artifact with the bra strap. Now you can fix that easily enough. You can bring back the transform tool. So I'll control T or command T. Go back to warp. And I'll just squeeze that in just a tiny bit. Just the tiniest amount. We're trying to get that back into line. That'll do close enough. You can clean it up of course by merging and using some of the repair tools like a healing brush or a cloning brush but I'll live with that. Yep that's good enough for me. Just zoom out. So okay here we go. Before and after. That's quite a reasonable result. Good enhancement, just enough so it doesn't look ridiculous, and that's the main point of the game. Don't go in too hard, don't go in too far. Okay, hope you enjoyed that one.